Chances are you've seen this interface before. This is the user interface of Adobe Photoshop and let's face it, it's the most dominant art program, it's the most prolific and most artists and creative professionals are either familiar with it or use it on a regular basis. However, if you're starting and want to get into digital art, not only are there a huge array of tools in this program that you won't need, let alone know how to use, it's also pretty expensive. Starting at at least around 20 bucks a month, Photoshop is a subscription-based platform which is gonna cost you hundreds if not thousands of dollars over time. When I first used Photoshop, it wasn't a subscription-based program. It was a one-time purchase thing. And over 10 years ago, there weren't many decent alternatives to Photoshop to people who wanted to get into digital art. However, today there are plenty that provide the basics that people want to get into digital art. So today we're gonna to explore some of those alternatives and I'm gonna give you my first impressions. G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and today we're exploring cheap and free alternatives to Photoshop for digital artists who want to get into creating digital art. I have given myself three core rules when it comes to compiling the list of the programs that I would explore for you here today. And those were that the program must be completely free or under $20. It must not be a subscription based program. So that means Sketchbook is out because as you can see, it's subscription based. Based. Even though it's pretty affordable and I know some people use it, I'm not going to be looking at Sketchbook today. And it mustn't be a demo version or try and upsell you to a pro version. So that means Manga Studio and all those programs are out and Art Rage is out because that's like 70, 80 bucks. But I know people have asked me to uh, explore some different programs like those. So if you're interested in art programs that I haven't explored here today, I still may potentially explore them. In fact, I'm going to put a poll here for you guys to vote on if you want me to do a different kind of art exploration video, whether it be cheap or free animation programs, mobile apps, uh, web browser apps, or Pro Tools lineups, like uh, professional art programs lineups, like I've done in this video, I can do that for other programs, but those are my parameters and these are the programs I will be exploring today. I've put together a list and a set of parameters I'll be judging them on, and the other disclaimer I need to give you is this is a first impressions video. Each program will get a five star score rating and some sub scores that will compile into that, such as price, user interface and user experience, the learning curve or how quick it takes to uh, get the momentum going, the enjoyment, because let's face it, if you're frustrated by a program you use, you're not gonna use it very long. And then of course, professional potential, because they're cheap and free programs, so they're gonna be easy to dismiss, but they may have the potential to allow you to uh, work in the future from them. So basically how this is gonna work is I'm gonna take these programs one at a time, time-lapse my art session with it, and then give you my verdict and score. This scorecard you can see here will be available for you in the description as a PDF, so you can check it all out with my notes and the star ratings. And of course, the links to all of the programs are in the description. And if you love and use any of these programs, particularly a free one, they often take donations and rely on those. So I would encourage you when perhaps you uh, make cool stuff over time and learn to love a program like like this, if you start to get client work and stuff, it's always nice to give a bit of love back to the developers because it's really cool that they make this stuff free and cheap for us. So program one, we have Paintstorm Studio. As you can see, this is the expensive program out of all of our programs here today. It's $19, but it's a one-time lifetime purchase. It is the expensive end of our program. In fact, I think all of the other ones are free, so uh, that's probably gonna get a lower rating on the price end for that. It's time to give this a go and uh, see how it is to use. All right, after some time, I've come to some verdicts with Paintstorm Pro. Please keep in mind, once again, this is all first impressions. So there may be stuff I haven't figured out or explored, but at the same time, if I come across problems or there are features I want and can't access or performance issues I can't easily and intuitively resolve in my first impression period, that counts against this program. And it means that if I, as a first time user, was gonna use it and then don't as a result of that first impression, that's what I'm giving to you now. Frankly, Paintstorm Studio, 
severely disappointed me. I really wanted this to be better than it is. Uh, and I do think it has a lot of potential and it gets some things really right, but it gets some pretty core things very wrong. So let's start off with price. Uh, I give it one out of five stars simply because in this lineup uh, and the info you guys are looking for is cheap and free. And this is the most expensive of the whole lineup. So one out of five stars because it's $20 and not $0. Do keep in mind the context though, because if the, this were in the grand scheme of things, this would get four out of five stars because 20 bucks if it were a pro program would be fantastic but unfortunately it's not. So let's get to the UI and user experience. I give this two out of five stars. There were some pros and some cons. The pros are really great. It looks fantastic. And the uh, when you go to the view, you can go to different workspaces and you can see not only does it have some custom workspaces, but it has some custom visual representations. You can also see that there's some different tints to the workspace you can get. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I had my own workspace, which is workspace one, which I changed and it did keep those changes when I closed and reopened. So there's some customizability. Now, the other thing I thought was kind of cool is that it works with PSDs. So if you have Photoshop files or someone gives you a Photoshop file, in theory, you can open it with this, or you can save this as a Photoshop file for someone who uses Photoshop to use. And I thought that was really cool, but now we get to the problem and that is performance. And from a user experience perspective, th this is a major one. If you can't consistently and accurately draw, and if the program can't predict and keep up with your pace, then you've got a problem. And that was the problem for me. This <laughs> is an example of me when I realized that this program wasn't keeping up with me or doing what I wanted, trying to draw a circle multiple times. I am a professional artist, right? I'm not the best artist in the world, but I can sketch circles pretty well and consistently. This didn't twice in a row draw a circle that looked in e even slightly like the circle I had previously. I thought maybe it was the tool itself. Nope, even when I changed brushes and altered brush settings and removed textures, I couldn't draw a circle. And look at some of these, look at this. That was meant to, I drew a circle. I know how to draw, I didn't not draw a circle there. Like some of these are ridiculous. They cut corners. Sometimes as you can see in the case of this one here, it overextends when I lift my pen, it drags in the direction that my pen lifted. So this for me was quite frankly, a big fat, deal breaker, not okay. If there are performance issues with the program or if there are some settings I should be able to change to, to optimize that, doesn't matter. I'm not using this program if it doesn't want me to use this program the moment I open it up and start using it. So that's a big problem. I apologize to the developers. I know a lot of work and love would have gone into this program, but that's a major issue to get wrong. Which brings me to my next point, learning curve. I did give them the benefit of my doubts and gave them three out of five stars because they did get some things really well done here. Aside from the customizability of the program, shortcuts and user interface, the tools that they have themselves are pretty straightforward for the most part. So there were some things where I thought to myself, I wanna try this or that, and it worked great. And then some other pretty basic things, which I don't know how to do after using this for 40 minutes, like adding a, a custom swatch color. How is that not more self-explanatory? There's a cog here, there's no, no? okay, you can't right click, uh, nothing, okay. So no custom swatches apparently. Surely, surely there is a way to do this, but the fact that it's not really easy, or self-explanatory, or there's no uh, guidance to, to figure out how to do that. Even when I go to their, their learning resources and type add swatch, nothing. On the plus side, their, their brush system is very pretty uh, and the brushes themselves blend really well. And as far as custom brushes, you have the ability to, uh, as you can see on the right here, if I change my brush settings, it changes it permanently uh, in the little brush tab here. And I can just hit this little icon here to add a new brush. So you could in theory create a really nice list of your favorite brushes and custom brushes and alter them or use them as you will. It does seem to change them when you change brush size and, and stuff like that. So that could be a problem because I like to change my brushes on the go and then swap between brushes. And if I go back to a, a previous default and it's permanently changed, then that's another problem. So yeah, I gave them the benefit of the doubt and gave them the highest rating and learning curve, but overall th this was uh, a bit lackluster. Now enjoyment, I gave two out of five stars and it began as an almost five star rating. Performance was the 
major issue here. And then as I came across those user experience issues, those basic functionalities that I couldn't access or use not working, that significantly decreased and this became a frustrating program to use. I had high hopes and it ended up being something I thought to myself I would never use this to make a polished piece of artwork which is not good as this is what we're looking for in our programs today. Which brings me to my last point, Pro Potential, two out of five stars only because the custom brushes and the, the fluidity of using those brushes is really nice. And if you like that workflow and if you're someone who works slowly and likes to create textured, uh, illustrative, more painterly style pieces, uh, much like Sketchbook, there is that sort of naturalistic feel to their tools. That is really good and cool and could be good for you if that's your workflow, but it's a very niche workflow. And as far as workflow goes, I can't see myself working efficiently or quickly uh, or with precision uh and consistently with a program like this. So unfortunately, I give the whole program two out of five stars, and that's me trying to be generous, but it's a harsh truth. <laughs> okay, so that's program one out of the way. Let's dive right into the next one. So next we have Critter. This is one that a lot of people have suggested I try or asked for my recommendations or thoughts on. So I'm gonna dive into this one today. This one is completely free, uh, and, and it looks like if this stuff has been created in it, it looks really cool. So let's give it a go. Okay, so my first impressions verdict for Critter. Uh, let's go through this one by one. Starting off with price, it's five stars because it's free. Yay! User interface and user experience, I gave four out of five stars. Occasionally the program felt a little unintuitive, but not in any uh, way that would hinder workflow drastically. But overall, it, it was actually really comfortable. The interface is simple and easy enough to figure out. Most importantly, the program had solid performance. And the first thing I did was the circle test and I think that's going to be the first thing I do in every program so I, don't, so I know what I'm in for. Uh, but yeah, this this uh, obviously, uh, the, you know, they're not perfect circle, circles, they're sketchy circles, but in any instance where I saw that the program was slightly lagging behind my reasonably rushed uh, circle drawing, it made up for that by just slightly lagging and, and drawing the end of it. Now, when I say that, I don't mean that the program is laggy. I was drawing these very quickly and I wanted to see how it would keep up. Whereas in the case of our previous program when I was drawing quickly it would make up for that lag by interpreting the rest of the stroke rather than creating what I actually drew. So this program draws what you draw which is <laughs> Good, that's very important. As far as user interface and uh, user experience goes, there's plenty to explore and there's even, uh, when I was playing around with different workspaces, an animation mode. So <laughs> this program is capable of a lot more than I was able to explore in this very short first impression session. That being said, it was pretty straightforward, not the most glossy or sexy of workspace environment, but it does exactly what it needs to do. And uh, moving on to learning curve, I gave this another four out of five stars because it was easy to pick up and I think a beginner should be able to get the basics reasonably quickly. I don't think that the shortcuts and the controls themselves are uh, entirely intuitive and especially if you're used to Photoshop or another program, there are some pretty standard universal keyboard shortcuts that weren't in this program. Uh, changing them was uh, easy enough, but also not as in-depth or, or simple as I would like. Even the naming conventions of the tools made it sometimes difficult to find and reset the keyboard shortcuts to my preferences. However, when you find the tools, they're fairly easy to customize and most importantly the learning resources whenever I had a question did help me solve my problems in every case I wanted to so that's that's really good. Uh, not perfect but it's all there. Enjoyment I gave four out of five stars again sort of coming back to some of those slight learning curve and interface issues that made it a little less fun but the art creation experience itself was very fun. So much so that I do genuinely feel like there's loads that I haven't gotten to explore, uh, such as effects brushes that come with default sort of overlays. And you can have some halftone mixes here. They default to scale and work with each other. I thought there was a lot of potential there. They have some really simple, straightforward brushes, which I felt our previous program was severely lacking, while also providing an array of genuinely interesting and more textured and painterly sort of brushes. So huge potential there 
just with the brushes uh, and then that in combination with a reasonably good workflow means that there's a lot you can do with this which is fantastic. I did a very rough sketch and outline of a character and the usability of the program was quite fun. It didn't leave me feeling frustrated, it was fun as I learned about the custom brush creation. In fact let me show you this, I thought it was really cool. Let's say you find a brush that you love in the uh, block brushes, something like this. You can up here change all the settings that you want and you can fill in uh, this little square here and and uh, I don't know either draw the brush itself or a little sign or write something and then rename your brush and call it my brush and save it to your presets and then you'll find that in the all brushes as you scroll down you've created your own little icon where is it there it is and you can also assign it to a tag and set up as many custom brush tags as you want so I made one called less than three and in that I have my favorite brushes which was really cool that I could so simply set up customize and add uh, my own brushes and I can build my own brush templates and presets and all that stuff really easily so loads of fun there and loads to explore definitely uh, a great program overall pro potential I gave four out of five stars I do feel like it's lacking in some features and uh, some polish particularly the transform tools and the manipulation tools I felt were lacking and a little frustrating but that being said I would be more than confident that uh, were you to become an experienced and proficient creator in this program you could definitely create client work and do professional standard stuff so fantastic program here I can definitely recommend Critter uh, as an art program for a beginner to learn in and have loads of potential to grow and expand their skills all in all I gave Critter four out of five stars overall it's a fantastic free program but it is now time to move on to our next program so next on our list is the program called Fire Alpaca. I'm getting immediate bad impressions from the website but immediate great impressions from the program name. So I'm going to install this and have a have a go and let you know what I think. Okay time for my first impression verdict of Fire Alpaca and put simply it's about as underwhelming as their website. On the plus side, it's free. Five stars for that. But moving on to the other stuff, user interface and user experience, I gave one star. Uh, it's super simple, but not in the good way. But there's no depth or room for artistry or creative expansion. Uh, of course, you could make cool stuff with this, but you can make cool stuff with Microsoft Paint. We're talking about this as a tool, and it's not a very good tool. There are very limited customized ability options, uh, keyboard shortcut changes I, I tried to explore and, and were very limited and the, the tools themselves are very limited. In fact, pretty much everything you see on the screen here is what you get. There was a comic uh, setup thing, a comic mode that I didn't explore that maybe I'm missing out on and could be good. But as far as creating a finished piece of art, this isn't going to be serving me very well anytime soon. I guess they tried to make up for that by having a humorous fire alpaca brush which looks like this so that's something learning curve one out of five stars uh, there were zero learning resources in fact if you go up here to help and uh, look around there's um, no help Go help yourself. <laughs> However, the program is shallow enough that you don't actually, I guess, need learning resources. You can, through trial and error, figure things out. There were a few things I wanted to learn to do that took me a bit longer than it should have, uh, but I figured it out eventually. For example, repositioning some of these grids, uh, which were some of the coolest things about this program were the, the grid options that you could use as guides. So you can draw along them and create perspective and stuff like that. And you can see I drew this very simple uh, home layout or whatever to sort of demonstrate that you could use these grids to create some really rough layouts of things if you really wanted to. And I thought that was cool. But of course we have the verdict of the circle test, which is another huge reason that this was a big thumbs down. Which brings me to enjoyment, which I gave one star out of five, at least with our first drawing tool, which had an almost equally abysmal circle test. Uh, it had some really cool things to make up for it. This program doesn't have much cool stuff going for it. So the fact that it doesn't even, you know, keep up with some simple circle sketches is not um, great. 
pro potential. If you were to, you know, make something for a client, you would be heavily sacrificing on workflow, tools, uh, effects, and polish uh, if you were stubborn enough to push through using a program like this. However, if you weren't looking for a creative, artistic, and deep drawing and, and painting tool, and you were simply wanting a, a cheap and free simple replacement to Microsoft Paint, I would definitely recommend this over the other ones, but that is not what we're looking for in our cheap and free lineup today. So I have given its pro potential zero out of five stars and the overall score of one star out of five. Now let's forget that like a bad dream and move on to our next one. We have GIMP. Uh, now this should be interesting because GIMP out of all of these is the only one I have used before, but I used it like eight years ago. Is it that old? Maybe. Probably. This is a free art program that has been around a long time. Uh, so I'm gonna give this one a go today. It's again entirely free so that's an automatic five stars there but we'll get into the program itself and see if it has kept up with things over the years and if it provides some really cool artistic tools for you guys. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for my first impressions verdict of GIMP and let's open up with the circle test. Yeah, so you know the circle test hasn't gone well when you, <laughs> what you've drawn looks more like hieroglyphics than quickly drawn circles. Uh, I mean, like, honestly, what, what is this? And this, what, what, what is this? Oh my God, don't get me started. What you're looking at pretty well summarizes my entire user experience. So I'm just gonna go through uh, all of the things I'm rating and just get through this one nice and quickly. First of all, price, I, I did automatically give this five stars. I'm rescinding that. For price, I'm giving this two out of five stars because I feel like after using it, I should be monetarily compensated for my time and the frustration I've gone through at trying to use it. Before I dive into the rest of the, the review of this art program, and in fairness to its developers, it would be unfair of me to not point out that this is called an image manipulation program. However, it has been touted by a lot of people here and there as a free art program. So uh, I guess what it's trying to do is some of the image manipulation stuff of Photoshop without being Photoshop, which is great if you want a way to easily without paying for Photoshop, tweak an image or, you know, remove some skin blemishes or retouch some colors in, in a photo or whatever. But this video is entirely about reviewing an art program for its uses in painting and drawing and it, this was a nightmare. <laughs> UI and user experience, the interface is god awful and uh, I would let that slide if the functionality were decent. Obviously the performance sucks and beyond that the tools are really hard to figure out where they are or what they do, how to customize them. I spent a long time trying to find a single brush I didn't mind and I actively despise all of them. <laughs> There's no pressure sensitivity options that I could find. Yeah, this I could go on but I won't. Learning curve, I gave this one out of five stars because it was confusing. The presets were confusing. The names of the tools were confusing. It didn't use keyboard shortcuts that I was used to uh, and changing them was a nightmare because they had a, a huge amount of superfluous stuff that you wouldn't want to change customizable keyboard shortcuts to, but that just muddied up the process of finding the things you wanted to change. Enjoyment, zero out of five stars. I actively hated this program while using it and last but not least, pro potential, zero out of five stars. Once again, we're not talking about the artist's ability to create professional material, we're talking about the program's capacity to provide a professional creation experience for an illustrator or artist, and this has not got that. So that is it for GIMP. I'm totally writing this one off with zero out of five stars. The only benefit of having actively explored this today is that I can 100% not recommend this to you. So let's move on. If I forgot the last one like a bad dream, then I need I need to cleanse myself with a fire after this one. <laughs> oh my god. I feel like this whole experience is a letdown for the people later along the list because I'm feeling my soul deteriorate in resilience as I go through <laughs> some of these art programs. But I genuinely want to give everyone a fair go and uh, a really open mind, explore things creatively, and, uh, and give you guys a real genuine experience. So next on the list we have Medibang Paint. Unfortunately the name leaves something to be desired. Medibang Paint. It sounds like a bad corporate name of a company that sells 
health based healing uh, drums. <laughs> but that doesn't matter because if this thing makes fantastic art and is great to use, then it gets five stars from me. It looks like it has a lot of potential. So let's jump into this one and see how it goes. Okay, so now our experience with Medibang Paint Pro. Uh, don't love the name, but the program itself isn't that bad. So I'll let it keep its five stars for, for free because it's definitely worth uh, having a look at for certain functions or activities and the fact that it's free is definitely a huge bonus. UI and user experience, it's attractive and fairly simple. Uh, it's a little confusing at times, specifically in the customizing of uh, certain shortcuts and presets. So brushes and stuff aren't the most intuitive to alter and create your own presets from. The circle test for this program, as you can see, wasn't great, but that being said, it wasn't the worst. It leaves something to be desired, but because it doesn't seem to be the most painterly textured sort of program, it seems more like something I would use for line work. Uh, that's not the worst thing in the world because I tend to slow down a bit for that anyway and get used to using my undo button because not all of my lines work out well, even when the program is super responsive. So I didn't find that to be as big a downer as it was for the first program where an unresponsive brush in a really fast workflow or something really more organic feeling is really going to be a detriment and affect your experience severely in the negative. As you can see the brushes that they have here are fairly inoffensive if unambitious but still uh, capable of getting a decent little result and comfortable enough to use. They're not incredible but by no means are they a waste of your time and to be honest I felt like Fire Alpaca sort of took an attempt at making a bad copy of this program because uh, a lot of the features I saw in Fire Alpaca are actually done here but well. For example, the guides in this are really comfortable and intuitive and uh, to use. You can see I did the same sort of thing, but could do more with them. And I loved that I could use the, some of these guides for things like cross hatching. It became pretty clear to me as I used it over time that this thing would be great for sort of uh, longer term projects or larger scale projects with simple needs artistically. So a manga or comic would be great because it does have the comic mode where it lays it out and you can use clipping uh, both in the normal mode and the comic mode but I guess this has print guides and things like that. Uh, obviously I didn't do anything substantial with it but I just explored some of the basic things. Zooming and transforming was a little frustrating. Shift didn't scale uniformly. Uh, snapping to things didn't happen. Again these could be features that I haven't found that are in the program but I haven't found them and they should be pretty easy to find. So that's a little bit of a downer. So I'll I'll put that in a negative in the learning curve aspect as well, which I'm giving three out of five stars because it was pretty simple to use and it's not a, an incredibly deep program and it does have uh, learning resources and support science. The enjoyment of the program, I'm giving another three out of five stars because it was fun to use for the simple stuff. However, I felt like if I was trying to do anything more in depth than some cool sketchy line worky stuff, for example, getting a painterly look with a, a painting style image would be pretty frustrating. And then of course the pro potential of this program, I'm going to give another three out of five stars, making the entire score for this program in my books three out of five stars. Decent polish can be achieved, particularly at the uh, more approachable level, but when you want more complex things, you're sort of going to start making compromises and losing things, or at least uh, losing a decent workflow. I guess the way I'd summarize this program and the way I feel about using it, it's great for the pages of a simple comic or something like that, uh, something repeatable, it's enjoyable, but I wouldn't use it to create the cover. Last but not least, our final program for the day is Inkscape, and it's free as it says in its slogan. Now I believe this is a vector, here it is, yeah, professional vector graphics editor. Uh, and it's free and open source. So that's fantastic. I'm gonna check this out and give you guys my score and verdict. First things first, let's look at my brush to I can't even I don't even know how to hide what I've drawn here what layer is that on 
that doesn't exist on a layer. Oh no, okay, well, let's move this out of the way to show you my uh, brush test. This is my circle test, and as you can tell, uh, obviously not very responsive. Now, there's an obvious uh, elephant in the room here. This is a vector program that seems very specifically about manipulating and creating shapes. Uh, with some pretty rigid boundaries. So you're not gonna want to make art or uh, illustration in this program. I think this is more for creating some pretty basic clip art you could, I don't know, export and, and use for something. I don't know, make maybe a super simple t-shirt design or something you could screen print. So let's go through my ratings. First of all, price, like GIMP, <laughs> I've given this two out of five stars because I feel inconvenienced having even used it, even though it's free. So, yeah, that's never a good sign. The user interface and user experience were just god-awful. As you can tell, this is dated, it's ugly, and uh, incredibly infuriating to figure out how it works. It's not intuitive at all. Which brings me to my learning curve. I've given this zero out of five stars. The shape, names, and functions are incredibly hard to decipher and figure out. The layout was hard to even know how to find windows. It turns out they're sort of docked here on the right. The customizability is limited and unappealing. And the help resources are limited to like seven or eight, I guess, options for certain functions. So actually finding a specific tool or a specific piece of helpful information, you're gonna sort of be up the creek with that. Enjoyment uh, is zero out of five stars. I actively hated using this program, specifically because I couldn't illustrate in it, which is really frustrating. That's really what I was looking at in terms of basic functionality out of all of these programs. And I guess the two that have fallen short the most are Inkscape and GIMP, both of which seem to be having a core function functionality of something else. And I don't know what Inkscapes is, but it's not illustrating, or at least not with ease. <laughs> Professional potential, I give it one star out of five simply because I guess you could make like clip art for a community newsletter that's aesthetically from the 90s. <laughs> but from an art and illustration standpoint, this is hideous and unintuitive and, and, and horrible. And I want to turn to alcohol after having used it. Luckily for this program, I'm already an alcoholic, so no damage has been done. <laughs> Which brings the grand total of stars for Inkscape to a lovely zero out of five. So I'm gonna give each of these uh, a word or two to give my, I guess, summary verdict or impression from my first impressions experience here today. Starting off with Paintstorm Studio, I'm gonna say lost potential. Uh, unfortunately, the, the stickiness of the, the painting tools is just not there. It's a real shame because this one d definitely has the most polish and presentation there. It's it feels the nicest to open up and want to start using, but in a program that functions as something that is going for something really organic uh, to not allow me to really up my workflow and be really free and expressive with my strokes and things like that, uh, I really feel like it's missed a, a pretty major mark. That being said, if you loved that workflow and the, the textures of the brushes and all that stuff, definitely check it out because if you have a slower workflow or are you willing to be patient with that sort of stuff, it, it can be worth that 20 bucks. It depends what you're looking for and what your workflow is. Critter is actually surprisingly fantastic. I mean, obviously it's not up there with the expensive pro apps, but this is free. This is a 100% free program. And unlike some of the other free art programs I used, when I opened it up, I don't even recall seeing any ads or any other way of it monetizing. So it may be based on community support. So if you end up getting and using Critter, definitely consider throwing them a, a dollar or two or the equivalent of a cup of coffee or even 40, 50 bucks later along the line. If you start using it professionally, it's, it's uh, really worthwhile as a free program and definitely my pick of today. Fire Alpaca, I would say is mediocre. I think it was going for a, a touch of whimsy, but didn't compensate for the fact that you couldn't actually really make anything worthwhile in it. Gimp uh, was just, um, I'd say a bit gimpy. <laughs> I think gimp sort of describes itself. Metabang Paint Pro, uh, efficient, 
for simplicity. I thought this was uh, definitely pretty good for some straightforward drawing tools, something that you could get used to working in and produce sort of long-term comics or something. It, it, again, it's completely free. It did have an advertisement when I opened it up, but for relevant products. So you open it up and it advertises a comic book and you can just close it and make your own comic book. But I thought that was pretty cool. Its features were, were great and for a free program, it really definitely held its own and was a standout on this list, second only to Critter. And then last but not least, we have Inkscape, which uh, I guess could be described as the most unartistic art tool ever. I guess that's more than a few words, but I feel like it needed to be said. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and my review of cheap and free art tools. Make sure to go vote in that poll if you want me to do another review of a kind of art program, be it animation or web app or mobile or even pro software and holding them up against each other. If you want to see how they go, I want to hear your feedback. How did I do in this video? And did I miss anything? What art programs should I have checked out and maybe compared to these? And beyond that, what art programs programs and animation programs would you like me to check out and see and uh, review for you? Not everyone can look at everything, but if you're all happy with how I reviewed these programs and informed you, I'd definitely be interested in taking a look at some stuff for you and giving my pretty candid thoughts and impressions. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to Draw With Jazza if you're interested in more fun with art. I like to explore stuff like this from time to time as well as do some challenges, hold community competitions, occasionally I do tutorials and sometimes I do some really wacky out there stuff or really ambitious crazy stuff like virtual reality or sculpture so definitely subscribe if you want to have some more fun with creativity here with me and my community thanks for watching ladies and gentlemen and until next time i'll see you later make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos and while you're at it check out my shop where i sell ebooks brushes photo references video courses and more there's another video you might enjoy from my channel over there, and you can also check out my behind the scenes daily vlog channel, Daily Jazza. That's it for now, and until next time, I'll see you later.